ruptured tendons, knockout punches, and multiple broken bones. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Jujutsu Kaisen anime, where I'll be breaking down fight injuries and telling you how we treat them. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm Dr. Maddy, your doctor from the UK, and if you have any other fight recommendations, please leave those down for me in the comments. Otherwise, give this video a like to help support the channel, and if you're ready, let's begin. <laughs> Oh gosh, so to start off with, we can see that she takes a slice to both ankles. And the main worry here would be whether he sliced through both of her Achilles tendons, which are the main tendons that attach your calf muscles to your feet, enabling you to walk. Now, I've seen a few injuries like this, and a simple test that I perform to see if the Achilles tendon's completely torn is what we call the calf squeeze test. A normal test would be that I squeeze the calf and you see the foot move, and an abnormal test would be that the foot doesn't move when I give it a squeeze. And if this test is positive, the patient will need an ultrasound scan to check the tendon, and if it's completely torn, they'll need surgery to reattach it. Even with that, you won't be walking right for quite a while. <laughs> oh, and next up, we've got a kick to the abdomen as well as the lower ribs. Again, I've seen many people come in who've taken a kick like this and fractured several ribs, which can be incredibly painful. And the other thing to consider is damage to the underlying organs, specifically the liver and the spleen. The dangers with a ruptured spleen is that it can lead to internal hemorrhage, and a direct blow to the liver with sufficient force can trigger your vagus nerve, leading to a drop in your blood pressure and heart rate, causing you to lose consciousness. <laughs> I guess the first thing to say here is that he's quite lucky that none of those nails have ended up hitting him, as I've seen many patients with nail gun injuries with nails in all sorts of areas. You'd really be surprised what people can survive with. The next point is that blow that she ends up taking to her chin, as we can see the brain getting smacked about inside the skull. And remember, with sufficient acceleration and deceleration forces on the brain, it can cause the brain to swell and even bruise. This can ultimately affect the way the brain functions, leading you to slur your speech, leading to difficulties of concentration, or even standing on your feet. And it's all these symptoms together that we end up calling a concussion. Oh gosh, so several stab wounds to the butt and to the inner thigh as we see a good blood splatter come out of the wound. Now, if we look at the anatomy of the blood supply to that part of the body, you've probably got one of the largest arteries in the body going through that area, and that is the femoral artery, which goes on to supply the lower limb. Now, if that's been severed and left untreated, you could really bleed to death in a matter of minutes. Your best chance is to apply a tourniquet above the point of those lacerations to help slow down the bleeding. <laughs> I love that her weapon of choice is a hammer, and really, as a weapon, this shouldn't be underestimated. If any of you out there have seen the old boy movies, you'll know what I'm talking about. But here we also get the introduction of Nanami, and in my opinion, he's got one of the best character designs, as well as best choice of voice actors. And there we see that he's wrapping up his knuckles like a boxer. But why do boxers do this? So I guess firstly, and probably most obvious, is that it's to provide protection of their own fists. Ironically, one of the most common injuries that boxers sustain is actually a boxer's fracture. 
And basically, this is an injury where the force of the punch is transmitted to the bones of the hands, causing one of them to fracture. And I guess the second reason for wrapping your wrists is that it helps with the alignment between your knuckles and wrist, helping to reduce any other injuries. Anyway, regardless of Nanami's reason, it looks totally badass. Oh god, a direct blow to the face, sending him flying. Now, with that level of impact, he's definitely fractured his nasal bone, and he may well have fractured other facial bones, such as the maxillary or zygomatic bone. And the danger with these kind of fractures is the profuse amount of bleeding, whether that's from the nose or going into the paranasal air sinuses. Now, sometimes a nosebleed can be so severe that it becomes life-threatening, and in those cases we perform what's called nasal packing, whereby we insert something that resembles that of a tampon into the nose to compress all the blood vessels. Also, looking just before the impact of that punch, I can see some sort of scale coming across his opponent's face. Has this got something to do with a specific power that Nanami has? Nakama. <laughs> and this is the very reason as to why a ponytail is a weakness in a fight, as we see that Nanami delivers an earth-shattering punch to his abdomen. Now, the first thing I'd be thinking is how painful an injury would be like this, as that blow looks like it's directly hit the solar plexus, which is a group of very sensitive nerve fibers found within the abdomen. The second point is unlike the injury we saw earlier, where they took a kick to the abdomen, this one is potentially far worse, as he's effectively being sandwiched between someone's fist and a solid wall behind him, which increases the risk of rupturing your internal organs like your liver and your spleen. If either of these organs do rupture, it would lead to massive internal hemorrhage and potentially death. <laughs> Oh god, that direct blow to the face is definitely a fight finishing move. It's likely that that would totally have obliterated his skull and the force of the punch would likely have been transmitted to his brain, leading to brain damage and possibly even brainstem death. But you know, just hearing this character's voice again, I think he's the same voice actor who's in To Your Eternity or Cells at Work. Let me know if I'm right down below. Anyway, that's all that we're going to be looking at from the Jujutsu Kaisen anime today. If there's any other fights that you'd like me to look at and give you a breakdown, let me know down below. In the meantime, if you're free just now and you want to see more, why not check out one of these two videos? Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks.